Hello friends, today we are going to be talking about Microsoft Teams channels, so let's get into today's video. Okay, we've got a few new things to show you guys about Microsoft Teams channels. First, I'm gonna do a quick rundown on how to use Teams channels and what exactly they are inside Microsoft Teams. But if you wanna dive more into that, I'm gonna link a video down below of the full training of Microsoft Teams channels. But mostly what we're going to do is talk about the new features that Microsoft Teams just added to channels as well as the best way to utilize your channels. So let's talk first about channels and how to use them. Okay, so inside of Microsoft Teams here, you've got chats and then you've got teams. Now, teams are where you can group multiple uh, groups of people together and kind of have these collaborative spaces where you can interact and have conversations. Um, and then underneath those teams are channels. So it's just a way to break up that team even more. So for example, underneath my team YouTube training, I've got two different channels. I've got the general channel, which we're going to be talking about a new update here about that. And then I've got Bobby's channel. Okay, so we've got two different channels here with all different files um, and folders connected to them, as well as different people that can be connected to each one. You have the option to do a shared um, public channel and then you've got the option to do a private channel. So what that's going to look like here is let's say that I'm creating, I'm, I'm going to right click on YouTube training and create a new channel. Okay, when I add that new channel, I've got the option to title it, but underneath here, I've got the channel type. This is where you can choose the standard, shared, or private. Standard is going to allow everyone on the team to have access. Okay, now everyone on that team is everyone that is connected already to the general channel of YouTube training. Then you've got this shared option. These these are people or teams in your organization or outside of your organization can access this. If you are going to be having guests inside of this channel, you want to make it a shared channel because they're not going to access it. Um, they're not going to be able to access it if you don't. Um, this is for maybe people that are collaborating with other organizations outside of their own or maybe clients or something like that. Then the last, last one, you've got private. Okay, these are specific people on the team only have access to this. Nobody else can see it but those people. Actually, they can see the title of the channel, but they cannot get into it. So let's say that we're creating a standard channel here. I'm gonna title this um, uh, channel training. And you can add a description if you want, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna click create. So then when I do that, it's gonna show underneath this list, um, and it's gonna show as channel training. So let's say that you created this channel here and it was shared, but now you wanna make it private. Well, um, that's too bad. <laughs> so <laughs> literally that's just too bad. Um, you'll have to delete it and start over again. There's no option to change the type of channel once you have already created it. Now, if you are watching this one month, maybe even two weeks after I have posted this and it is different now, please do not come at me because I'm sure they will update this in the future because it's very annoying. Um, I have made multiple channels that were uh, private and then I learned I couldn't um, add people into the file section to show them files inside of there and it was really driving me nuts. So I wanted to change the settings um, or the type of channel that it was to public rather than private and it would not allow me to do that. So I just had to create a whole new channel and move my files and folders over to that new channel. So when creating a Teams channel and you're choosing that type of Teams channel, I would choose wisely because you're not gonna be able to change it in the future. Okay, so that is just a little bit of a rundown on how to create a channel. If you want to delete a channel, um, you can right click or click the three buttons to the right of the name and choose delete channel. Um, when you do that, um, you also have the option to archive the channel. Now here's the two differences. One is going to completely and permanently delete it. The other is going to keep it in a little archive where if you ended up deciding to 
add it back again, it would save everything. So when I choose to delete it, it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to delete this? All the conversations will be deleted. Your files are still accessible um, in the SharePoint uh, site that it created for that channel. But as far as the channel conversations and whatnot, um, all of that is going to be gone. I'm going to choose yes and delete it. And then boom, it's gone. Now let's talk about inside of a channel. Let's go to Bobby's channel and you've got a few options here. You can start a post, which is going to add a conversation. I think this is self-explanatory. You just start conversations and people can message. It's basically like a, a Facebook page, you know, where you're just adding posts and then people can comment and reply underneath it or respond to it. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Then you've got the file section over here. This file section Anyone who has access to the channel is going to have access to all of the files underneath here. There's no way around that. If you want people to not have access to these files, put it in a different channel and make that channel private so that they can't access those files. But anybody who has access to this channel, Bobby's channel, is going to have access to the files under this. Then you've got the notes section. The notes section is going to create a shared notes area where everybody inside of the channel will have access to this notes. It's going to take a second to create the note itself, but it basically creates a whole entire notebook for this team. So notice that at the top here, it's got YouTube training notebook. So everyone inside of this team can access this notebook and you can see the same notebook in the general tab if you go to the notes section and you add it here you can access it from multiple different channels you've got tons of options to add a different tab and different apps in here microsoft planner word excel tons of things the options are endless um, and then you even have the option to start a meeting or schedule a meeting for this channel so what it's going to do is it's going to add automatically all of the people that are inside of this channel to that meeting so instead of adding everyone on your staff every time you create a team meeting you don't have to you can create it inside of this channel and everyone who is added to the channel will be added to the meeting. So that's a little hack that's nice to know. Um, then if you click on the three dots here to the right, you've got a few extra options. These are going to be the same options that you'll have if you hover over Bobby's channel over here and click the three dots here. Notice that they're all going to be the same. There's a few things that Microsoft has added recently that I want to tell you guys about. And this is how you can rename the general channel. So for years, we have these general channels that are automatically created when you create a Microsoft team and you can't change them, you can't get rid of them, and you can't rename them. But now you're able to rename them. So you can use them as a channel however you'd like. Just click the three dots and choose rename and you can change this. Once you rename this channel, you won't be able to change the name back to general. Okay, I don't know why that matters, but it's just a pop-up that I thought might as well you should say. So uh, there's the option there. But then another thing that I wanted to show you guys, so when you click the three dots, they have added a connection of workflows directly into Microsoft Teams channels now. So if you click on this workflows option, you've got a few different opportunities. Forward emails to channel. Notify a team when a planner task changed status. Okay, you can notify a team of a new SharePoint file added. So this is like inside the file section if somebody adds something. There are, are a few workflows here that could be very helpful for your team and you can easily just click and add them directly to a channel straight from Microsoft Teams instead of going to Power Automate directly or whatever. So these might be helpful for your team. If you don't know how to do workflows, I wouldn't recommend messing around with this unless you know a little bit about Microsoft workflows already. So again, this is just a quick tutorial on how to use Microsoft channels if you're new to it or you want to learn just a little bit about the updates of it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have questions about, about Microsoft channels, make sure to comment below. Um, if you want to learn more about other parts of Microsoft channels, I have the link to my other Microsoft uh, Teams channel video in the description below. Make sure to like this video if you want to see more content about channels. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!